Okay, let's talk about why I'm so excited about this new Fuji X-T200 release. I started to get excited about the X-T100 when I heard about it, and then I heard that it doesn't shoot 4K. Well, it does at 15 frames per second. Then I heard there was no image stabilization and the autofocus wasn't very good. The, the reason why I like the camera is because it had some of the key features that I love on the G7. An articulating screen, although you can't actually hide the screen like you can on my G7. Small form factor, mirrorless system, lightweight camera. And when, I'm, when I say lightweight, I mean really lightweight. I have the X-T3 here. Now, yes, it's a smaller camera and compared to my cinema camera, it's a lighter camera, but it is not a light camera. Um, when you hold a camera out like this for vlogging, it quickly becomes heavy. So every little bit of weight savings is a huge deal. This camera is so lightweight. Um, yes, it does feel a little bit plasticky. When it is your only camera, you like to feel like you've got something, you know, that's pro. But I have pro cameras. I'm looking for something that gives me a good 4K image. Um, but super lightweight as well. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to improve. Now, this is footage from my Lumix G7. And as you can see, I'm getting pretty decent footage as it is. But what I'm looking for from the T200 would be uh, a shallower depth of field that I get from the uh, APS-C sensor as opposed to the Micro Four Thirds sensor. And I'm also really interested in better color profiles. Um, with this footage, I actually have to do quite a bit of work in post. Uh, to color grade this up to this standard. And I know the Fuji has really nice film emulation that would give me something hopefully quite comparable out of camera. And the autofocus on the G7 is not all that great either. As you can see there with that one shot of the uh, orange car leaving, it kind of hunts there for a second. So any improvement there would be quite welcome. I just want to get away from the Micro Four Thirds system. There's an aesthetic to APS-C or definitely full frame that's even better, but um, I don't need to go as far as full frame for what I'm looking for. I think the APS-C is going to be perfect. It's much better in low light. Um, I think overall, I just want a bit of a bump up of an upgrade, but I don't want to lose all the great features that this camera has. I haven't been someone super concerned with having an out of camera uh, image that's just perfect. I usually shoot in log and then I just want maximum flexibility to color grade and so on. And I still kind of want that, but I'm learning to appreciate having a file, like as a YouTuber, having a file that comes out of camera that I can just drop in a timeline and worst case, add a lot to it or something and, and not really mess with it too much. In fact, maybe not even a lot. Okay, so let's go through some of the specs here on the Fuji website. First thing, it's a 24.2 megapixel camera, as opposed to my G7, which is only 16 megapixel. But the 24.2 megapixel is the same as the X-T100. So nothing's really changed there. And it is a Bayer sensor. In some of the other Fuji cameras, they offer the X-Trans sensor, which apparently is a little bit better, uh, reduces more A because they don't have to run a low pass filter, which actually degrades the quality. So there will be some sacrifices. Oh, and it is an APS-C sensor. But here's the cool thing. In order to get its 4K image, it actually downsamples from a 6K image that it's getting from the sensor into the 4K, no crop. That's right, 4K, no crop. And it even does HDR in photo and in video. Storage media, yeah, standard SD cards. Everybody knows by now that if you're gonna shoot in 4K, you want a fast card. So here's the recommendations there. Um, Movie file format, it's MPEG-4 H.264. That is important to me. Um, I like that standard on my G7. On certain frame rates, I have to use AVCHD, and I'm not super happy about that. Actually, I'm fine with it, but DaVinci Resolve doesn't really like it. In regards to the SD card as well, it's a single card slot. I think most budget cameras would be. Bigger cameras like my EVA-1 take two cards, but uh, smaller cameras generally would only take one card. The lens mount is the X mount. Autofocus face and eye detection, yes. Continuous shooting is eight frames per second. I believe my G7 is seven frames per second. That's just for stills. 
and let's check out the frame rates. It does up to 4K 30 and full HD in 60 frames per second. And this high speed movie mode, essentially this goes up to 120 frames per second in full HD. And like I said, you need to use an SD card that is UHS speed class three or higher for your 4K movie recording. In fact, I'd recommend a higher speed card for everything just to avoid any issues. So film simulation mode. Now there are a few ones that there are other more expensive cameras offer, but you still get 11 different color profiles essentially. So those are listed here. Advanced filter. I don't know that I would ever use these toy camera, miniature pop color, these sorts of things. I'm not super interested in those. Maybe you are. And touchscreen. So actually what I've heard about this touchscreen is it's very responsive, very similar to a cell phone. Problem with a lot of these cameras is the, the touch capability is not very responsive. So I've heard good things about this. You should have no problem getting around the menu, uh, tapping for autofocus, swipe, zoom, pinch in and out. This camera does have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I've heard the remote app is pretty handy for stopping and starting your uh, recording from your cell phone. Interface is USB-C, uh, HDMI micro connector. So if you're connecting to your TV, chances are you'll need a conversion there. Microphone, it's a 3.5 millimeter mini jack. Uh, that's a bump up from the 2.5 millimeter jack that was on the X-T100. A lot of people complained about having to put an adapter on that. So that's no longer a problem. And through the USB-C port, there's a supplied adapter that you can connect a 3.5 inch headphone jack. And with these smaller cameras, it's very rare that you even get an option to hook up headphones. Battery, apparently the battery of life isn't too bad on this. I know I'd wanna order a couple extra batteries. And in the box, you'll get a battery, a USB cable, a headphone adapter, shoulder strap, body cap, and basic manual that no one will read. Now they don't talk about the digital gimbal in these specs, I guess because that's more of a software thing. It's not IBIS, but I guess we're gonna see if this digital gimbal helps in the stabilization efforts. But the other thing is I would probably buy it with a kit lens. And I believe the kit lens that I'd be looking at would already have optical image stabilization. That helps with micro vibrations. It's not gonna help stabilize it like a gimbal obviously, but I guess we'll see how the whole solution works together. For me, I know the X-T3 is a better camera in a lot of respects, but not having a flip out screen is just a no go for me. The X-T30, it's very similar to the X-T3, a little cheaper. It still gives you 10 bit 422 through a clean HDMI output, but no flip out screen. Again, it's a no go for me. And looking at some of the other Canon options, I know that their autofocus is really good. I'm just gonna go on a little bit of faith here and hope that what Fuji's come up with for this camera is gonna be comparable, or at least decent. I'm really kind of excited about what Fuji's doing. I like the ergonomics of what they've built. I love the way it looks. I like the image quality that I've seen from these cameras. And I think a lot of that's attributed to the film simulation modes. So, although that could just be equated as a color profile, so why am I buying an entire camera based on a color profile that I could obviously do things in post, especially myself, someone who uses DaVinci Resolve all the time. Like I said, I'm learning to appreciate having a good image out of camera that I can drop into a timeline. And I know for a six, $700 camera, there's gonna be some compromises. It's just a matter of finding the right compromises. And also besides the digital gimbal, it also has digital stabilization. So both are options here. The thing about any software stabilization, whether it's in camera or in post, it benefits from a higher shutter rate. Although you may sacrifice a little smooth motion blur, a higher shutter speed should help the camera manage stabilization a little bit better. Or if you're doing it in post, it'll help your computer do it. And I'm pretty sure you can actually have both working at the same time. So those two things in combination with optical image stabilization in your lens, this might be a pretty decent solution. Yeah, so if they don't screw it up and you know, this price point is amazing, a fully articulating screen, mic input jack, uh, no crazy stuff like, um, you know, some of these cameras that do a, a flip up screen that blocks so you can't put a microphone on the top on the uh, hot shoe. Um, but you know, this, you know, they already do this. We, we already saw the pictures of the camera. It, it, it has the right form factor. Um, the lenses in their lineup, I've, I've seen a number of their lenses. Of course, they don't have the kind of selection you can get 
with Canon, but they do have some good lenses. And to be honest, with these types of cameras, I get a, a half decent zoom range, like this is a 16 to 80 on here, which would be great. Um, then it gives me enough options. I just basically leave one lens on it. This is not that type of a camera for me, the way I would use it. I wouldn't be swapping lenses constantly on. I just wanna get one or two decent lenses. And I'm gonna leave them on there all the time. Well, I hope you liked this video. I'm not sure it was all that more helpful than you just going to the Fuji website. But either way, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.